bless you, beloved. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My God, my rock, my fortress, my high tower. And we just thank you for tuning our way. Uh, welcome to the Fresh Bread Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor C.D. Middleton of the Bethlehem Baptist Church. And what a joy it is to come into your airways today. I thank God for just another opportunity to share his holy word. There's an awesome word today. It's real simplistic, but yet it's uh, profound. And I want to, if you would, go with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. And I want to read verse 5 through 10. And I want to put some emphasis on verse 9. Here it is. This then is the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you that God's light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, here it is. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's 1 John, the first chapter, verse 5 through 10, the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, we come this morning with grateful hearts, thankful for another day. This is a day that you have made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. Lord, as we set aside this moment in time to share your word, I pray for a fresh anointing, a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost. Use me for your glory. Let your word be a blessing to your people and draw people to Christ from your word. Because the truth of the matter is, we can't come to you except you first draw us. So God, use me as long as you can. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to I wanna talk about this morning. He forgets our sins because he's faithful. He forgets our sins because he's faithful. John, the beloved apostle, who is now the elder statesman of the, of the apostles. He is an old man, well seasoned in the faith at the time of this writing. He is the same apostle that penned the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. John writes this letter not as someone who has heard or read about Jesus, but he writes from an experience of someone who has firsthand eyewitness account and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself, the living word. In John's writings, he declares that God has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the word of God. John has given us a bird's eye view of who God really is. And right here in 1 John 1, he says, we have heard him. We have seen him with our eyes. We looked upon him. Our hands have touched him and handled him, 
for the life was manifest and made known, and we have seen it, and bear witness of it, and show unto you that eternal life. He says, what we have seen and heard, we are declaring it to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So John is writing to us that our joy can be full. In other words, so that we can have, we can be full of joy. And one thing we can't afford to miss about this text, in this passage, John is talking to believers, saved folk, people that have been changed and redeemed, and people that have been born again. He's not writing to the sinner, but he's writing to saints. And before I get you to 1 John 1, 9, there's some groundwork that John is laying out. In verse 5, he says, God is light. In other words, God is holy, he's righteous, and God is sinless. And in him is no darkness at all. No, there's no unrighteousness, no sin or wickedness in God. So, okay, believer, if we say that we have fellowship with him, and fellowship and koinonia in the Greek having something in common, it is, it is a sharing, it expresses a twofold relationship. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, walk in sin, unrighteousness, ungodliness, we lie and do not the truth. And walking in this passage, it denotes a continuation, a habitual practice, lifestyle of living in sin. Help somebody. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and light represents holiness, righteousness, and godliness, we then have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And that word is a continual cleansing. He continues to cleanse every day that we're in right relationship with him. And so verse 8, this verse is for all you little Jesuses, you saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, fire baptized, tongue talking, and ain't sinned all day. Well, you just sin because you just lied. Saying you haven't, you ain't even sin. You saying you ain't got no sin in you. That's a lie. So you just sin. But verse 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Yes, you're saved, but that don't mean you're perfect. You do mess up. And although you have a new nature, you don't practice sin any longer. You don't have a desire to habitually sin. You haven't made it to heaven yet. Help somebody. You, you can love God with all your heart, live a holy, righteous, sanctified, set-apart life, but you still haven't got to heaven yet. And so you are still here on earth. And while you're on earth, you're wrapped in this earth suit called the flesh. And if the Holy Ghost don't keep you, then you're subject to say and do anything. And you're talking about you don't sin, you're just fooling yourself. In verse 8, you're deceiving yourself. And the truth is not in you. So here, here, here is the shouting piece. Although we've been saved, although we've been delivered from sin, the truth of the matter is this, that we still carry around the old man and the old nature. And sometimes the old man will rear up and you'll sin in word, thought, and in deed. And you will say some things that you have no business saying. And, and Lord knows you will think some stuff that don't line up with scripture. And you will do some stuff that you thought you had been delivered from. But thank God for the cross. Because of the cross of Christ, we have a blessed promise right here in the text. Here it is. If, if, if. We confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's good news. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I, I know, like I know my name, like I know the nose of my face, that I've truly been born again. I know I'm saved. I have evidence to prove it. I have a changed lifestyle. But the reality of that is, we, I still mess up sometimes, although I don't intend to. It's just the sin nature that we carry around along with the new nature. But thanks be to God that he's a forgiving, merciful God and that he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And let me just go on and tell you, while you're here on earth, as long as you're living here on planet earth, you'll never get big enough, holy enough, Mature enough, sanctified enough to grow out of 1 John 1 9. You will always need 1 John 1 9. You, you don't get too anointed for 1 John 1 9. And I say it again. And you can love God with everything in you, but you still fall short. And that, that that's not giving you a license of sin. That's just the raw reality of the text. Help somebody. Shall we continue with sin that God, that grace may abound? God forbid. That's because we don't continue in it. Does not mean we're not susceptible to it. And so you got to stay on your P's and Q's. But we have a blessed consolation that we have this text. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, he forgets our sins. Because he's faithful. He forgets our sin when we apply the principle of 1 John 1 9. When we mess up and fall short, it's incumbent upon us to confess our sins to a holy God. And we just can't run by the word confess. When we confess our sins, you're not telling God something that he doesn't know. Because God is omniscient. He knows everything. Confess in the Greek is homologo, which means to speak the same with the desire of another. God already knows about your sin. He is desirous of you to come into agreement with him about your sin because sin hurts your fellowship with God. And you already have sonship when you've been born again. But Jesus already purchased that. It's about your fellowship. It's disrespectful to keep coming up in someone's face that loves you knowing full well that you wronged them. You need to confess your sins. Yes, he forgets all sins. Number one, because he's faithful. He's faithful, and faithful means certain. He's certain. He's worthy to be believed. He's true. He's trustworthy. He's observant of the steadfast to one's word or promise. In other words, he's steadfast to every promise he's made you. Not only is he faithful, but he's just, and just means the right justice, conformable to right, pertaining to right. In other words, God always does the right thing. God is faithful to his word. Every promise in the word, God is faithful to. Even 1 John 1, 9. Let me pull up some promises in his word. Matthew 5 and 18 Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. One jot, one iota. 
the smallest letter or tittle, the smallest strike, stroke of the pen will not pass away from the law of God. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall not do it? Or hath he spoken it and shall he not make it good? 2 Corinthians one twenty, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen. Jeremiah one twelve says he hastens his word to perform his word. He watches over his word to do his word, to perform his word. He's faithful and not one of his promises falls to the ground. So we have the blessed hope that the God we serve is a faithful God. But not only is he faithful, number two, he's forgiving. There is no sin that the Lord Jesus Christ will not forgive. And that's big or small. God doesn't categorize sin like we do. We say murder, adultery, homosexuality, or the scarlet sins. But God can forgive all of that. The only sin that he, he won't forgive is the total rejection of the Holy Spirit. That's blasphemy. In other words, the Father was here in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ came to earth to redeem and went back to heaven. And he sent the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, to the church age. But if you reject him, there's nothing that's coming. And so I'm thankful that he, he's a forgiving God. Psalm 32 and 1 says this, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalm 32 verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Romans Chapter 4, verse 7. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Romans 4 and 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He's a forgiving God. Listen, listen to this. This is going to bless your soul right here. Psalm 103. Verse 10 through 14. Listen to this. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed all transgressions from us. And somebody knows like me that the east and the west will never touch. And so that's how far God has removed our transgressions from us. Verse 13. Like as the father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Verse 14. Here is the clinching part. For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are just dust. Frail, frail. We're just dust made from the dust of the ground. And if the Lord don't keep us, we'll perish in the midst of our wrong. And so Micah 7 19 says this. He cast or hurls your sin in the sea, never to remember them again. I heard the old folks say he cast your sin in the sea of forgetfulness. That's what God does for your sin when you confess your sin. Isaiah 38, 17. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it 
from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For God cast all sin behind our back, behind his back. He's never going to look at them again. He's never going to bring them up to you again. They're perfectly forgiven. And you can get up and walk on in the grace and the mercy and the peace of God. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29, the B clause. Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Yes, God forgives us. He's a forgiving God. When he forgives, forgive means to send away or dismiss. The Hebrew word for forgiven means to be lifted off. Christians sometimes are weighted down with sin and with the burden of sin. But when we confess all sins to a holy God, God lifts off all sin and eradicates all sin. He'll forgive you and cleanse you. He'll make you free from filth and he'll purify you from pollution and the guilt of sin. And so my sisters and brothers, he forgets all sins because he's faithful. Number one, he's faithful. Number two, he forgets all sins. And number three, we have some part to play in this deal. We have to forsake our sins. We have to renounce and turn away. Do a 180. Turn away from our sin entirely. Give it up and repent and come to Jesus. He forgets our sins because he's faithful. Number one, he's faithful. Number two, He's forgiven. And number three, we must forsake our sins. Well, that's my time right now. And let me extend to someone that's watching today. You don't know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of sin. The only way you can qualify for First John 1 John 1.9 is you must be in Christ. And when you're in Christ, God has already judged your sin once and for all on the cross of Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, that sacrifice, it pleased and appeased God the Father for our sin debt. All you have to do now is forsake your sin and come to Christ, and he'll receive you just like you come. It matters not your walk of life. It matters not what you have done in the past. The Lord Jesus Christ would take a giant eraser called the blood of, his, the blood of Jesus, and he'll wash all your sins away, and he'll make your soul white as snow. Come to Jesus today. He loves you with the everlasting love. And he died just for you. So it doesn't make good sense to die and go to hell when Jesus Christ has already died for you. And so God, the Father, does not want you to be eternally separated from him. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to love on you. He wants to give you his peace. But you have to come to his son by faith, his son, Jesus Christ. And so if you made that decision today, that's the most valuable, important, that's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life to choose Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Because the truth of the matter, when the rubber meets the road, when it all boils down, the only thing that would matter is what you have done with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I urge you, I beseech you to come to Christ today. He'll forgive you, he'll love you, and he'll put you in right relationship with God the Father through him. Amen. And so, that's my time for giving opportunities. I want to admonish and tell the saints that you have been a blessing. 
you have been obedient to what God said in his word as it relates to giving. You have blessed the storehouse above comprehension. And so I just want to encourage you that every time you give, God will in turn give back to you. That's the kind of God he is. You can't be him giving, no matter how hard you try. And so you can go to the Give Plus mobile app. You can go to Facebook, the East Service payment link. Or you can go to the United States Postal Service and drop your gift in the mail. And however you decide to give, we'll receive your gift with Thanksgiving. And so thank you today for viewing via Facebook and YouTube. That's my time for the day. Lord willing, we'll see you next week. May the grace, mercy be multiplied on you and yours. Peace.